Hi guys, this is Nadia Hilker. I'm playing Magna on The Walking Dead, and you guys are listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, and I'm sending you all my love. Bye! Hello, my name is Cassie McClincy. I play Lydia on The Walking Dead, and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Yeah! Hey there guys, I'm Callan McAuliffe and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, I'm Lindsley Register and I play Lara on The Walking Dead. You're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media. Hey, this is Ross Marquand and you're listening to The Walking Dead Talk Through. Awesome. <laughs> Hey survivors, welcome to episode 141 of the Walking Dead Talk Through, or should I say Tales of the Walking Dead Talk Through. <laughs> I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. Yay, we're back. <laughs> we are back. Yes, it's very, very good to be back after such a nice little long break, but definitely was missing everyone and all the fun comments, and now we got a new show. <laughs> Ah, all right. Well, first, before we start, I'd like to remind listeners that Patreon subscribers are able to listen to early access versions of the podcast ahead of everyone else. Uh, we basically, um, I le- uh, Patreon uh, subscribers get basically an edited or lightly edited version of our recording tonight, and that way they get to hear it before it gets actually published to the main feed. So, uh if you would like to also just support us and every little bit helps, this is a great little perk. And we have some other stuff planned. And, you know, since we cover so many different shows of the Walking Dead universe, um, kind of still gets a little, yep. we try to like, you know, try to get, you know, things going. But then, you know. And, you know, while I'd like to say that uh, we're pretty funny in the edited version. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I think we could be more funny in the lightly edited version. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tend to like, there's a lot that get has to get cut out. So it's definitely good to hear a lot of how the sausage is made, as we like to say. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, uh, anything, any little bit of support would be appreciated. And as we said, you can get it, early sometimes substantially early Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you know just something for you guys to think about yes and on that note we have a new patreon yay yay a big thank you to mike rollo for supporting the podcast thank you mike uh he's been as most of you listeners know from fear uh he uh jumped in and like got caught up and you know started being able to like you know post comments and all that stuff so thank you mike so much for your support um and if you want to know more you can go to patreon.com slash walking dead talk through for more all right well let's get on to this episode um season one episode one titled evie slash joe which i think that's kind of the way they're handling this right now um it's the two different characters or like whoever the main focus on, but that's the title of this episode. It's written by Maya Goldsmith and Ben uh, Sokolowski and directed by Ryan Underwood. Description from AMC plus is a prepper leaves his bunker only to be saddled with a hippie who finagles her way on the ride. (laughs) All right. uh, Onto our ratings. Um, I'll start with mine. I give it an eight crazy Joker makeup Sandra's. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I, yep. <laughs> I, I gave it an eight and a half out of 10 new faces, same old troops. <laughs> yep. That's definitely a good one. Cause all right. Well, that leads us into our listeners ratings. LT, you want to take the first one? I shall. The first listener rating is from Dieta from Detroit, who gives it an eight out of 10. We friends, we not friends. And she's got, I think that's roll on the floor, roll on the floor, roll on the floor emoji. Loved the back and forth. (laughs) 
Yep. Uh, get Glennis from Toronto gave it an eight out of 10 sidecar with a sidekick. And Renee from Atlanta gives it a six out of 10. No further comment. <laughs> and Mike from Asheville gave it a nine out of 10. No other comment. Emma from the UK says, I'm still waiting to hear how I can watch it in the UK. So I'll have to catch up with you guys at some point. <laughs> XXX. Oh, Emma, I like looked to because I was surprised that it wasn't actually available in the UK, but they have not released it or how it's coming. So hopefully soon, Emma, because, um, yeah, it's you can catch up and whenever they do release it and just send us all your comments about each episode that you're able to do, depending on where we're at. But hopefully they don't hold that back. Uh, all right. Uh, that leads us into our awesome sauce. And we only got one uh, from Glennis from Toronto, and she said the electric motorcycle and Skipper the Lamb. <laughs> Skipper. Yeah. All right. Well, that leads us into our awesome sauce. So I don't know if you had anything um, to really add if you wanted to go ahead. I kind of put a whole bunch of stuff in there because, I don't know, there's... There was just you a lot. Did. Yeah. I mean, it's I kind of just went through. My mind was just kind of like spinning and I just was writing everything down. So I guess I can go on, you know, first. And yeah, because you basically had everything covered that I was going to say anyway. Go, okay. <laughs> I, I was wondering if that might be. With the exception <laughs> of I'm going to uh, throw something else. Um, I was excited for Terry Crews. Mm. I'm still excited for Terry Crews. And I was not, I, I guess I knew Olivia Munn was in this episode, but I really liked her as the uh, artsy fartsy hippie. Mm -hmm. I, I think the two of them worked well together. And it was. You know, it was a lot of fun to see them, you know, as a duo mm -hmm. navigating, you know, upstate Ho Ohio and Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, I think, you know, and I think even like, uh, oh, we've heard like, you know, like I think Dietta actually said with her rating or whatever, the, the back and forth between both of them was really 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 good like i, I just really yep. enjoyed it and even like on the second watch and the third watch it's like i i caught more of it and thankfully you know it's like there's captions so that kind of helps you know me hear everything um because when i'm just watching it the first time you know things just kind of get lost but yep um but for one though it's like okay terry cruz i like he you could <sighs> you already kind of have an idea of like what kind of roles that he plays maybe, or like just, I don't want to like be like trying to stereotype, but you know, it's like he, since he's such a big guy, whatever, it's like, okay, yeah, him being this like, you know, football jock. Yeah. I mean, that made sense, you know, that he would be playing that kind of yeah. character. And Olivia Munn, like I've loved her since like way back in the attack of the, um, attack of the show days on G4. And like, yes, I mean, I haven't seen some of like everything else like she's done like after that. Um, but I know that the, like for them to make her like this hippie and just her banter and like her, the, the, the way they wrote her just fit her so well. And, then you had both yeah. of them. I, I thought it was just like such a great little partnership. So I definitely am kudos to, you know, the writers or like, you know, just doing this because it really worked very, very well. Yeah. I mean, individually, I liked both their characters, but you could tell that the two of them, you know, kind of had that buddy team up chemistry and it, it showed. So I was really happy, you know, with that part of it. Yeah, and actually, I think uh, Terry Crews said in that 
uh, Talking Dead special that, you know, he worked on a show with her before. So when he came on and he was paired up with her, he said, he's like, oh, no, I'm like, I was so great to like basically like see her again after we worked together, like, you know, I don't know how many years ago. So it was like they kind of already maybe like already had that kind of little connection anyways. And so getting them back together just kind of played off really well. So I forgot what the show was. It was I wrote it somewhere down. But um, <clears throat> but anyways, regardless, was really, really good. Um the next awesome sauce is just again, I you know, I was kind of doing this with fear, where it's like when we see or hear or do you know other new things in this universe, we got some new Walker nicknames. Cause I don't think, you know, uh they called them toe tags, and then I think Sandra referred to them at least, the storm of dead eyes. So it's like yep. you know, they're still we're still getting like, you know, these new names of like what people are calling the Walkers. Um, which is kind of nice because it's, you know, it kind of, to me, feels like it puts you into this world a little bit more because we're seeing areas that were, you know, that we're not used to seeing because this isn't the main show, which has just always been kind of the focus of everything. Um, yeah. So that's been good. Um, I also really like the fi- the feel of the episode because it was just like, there was just like a lot of this humor and kind of like uplifting drama because it's like, you know, this budding friendship. And then they like were trying to, you know, learn about each other, survive with each other. But then, uh, you know, it's just that the whole way that this whole played the story played out, it wasn't like so serious, which was nice because, you know, the main show is like all about like, oh, my gosh, we got to kill these people because they're trying to kill yeah. us. And it's just like stressful and which is not bad, but that's just not what this show is and so it was a very right it, it was a very nice change to like kind of get this kind of a drama and like a, a, you know episode or whatever um yeah and i don't want i want to throw it in here the one thing they did in this tales episode is something that we talked about at one point i want to say in fear is that by the use of the little postcards mm-hmm. during the travel montage we got what we have always complained about with fear. We got, where are they? Where are they going? How long have they been on the road? That that's the way you do a travel montage. Cause you know, we had talked about at one point they need to do like the Indiana Jones map with the red line. <laughs> yeah. That this is, this is a way you can do that. And it conveys that you are traveling over a distance. Yeah, no, totally. And it was, it was just like clear, simple, didn't have to even go any further than that. We just saw that like, oh, they're in Ohio. Oh, here's some other, you know, uh, cities. I think I even wrote them down, but anyways, but yeah, it's like you, you got to see like, oh, they were traveling. They're going North. Right. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Um, well then next it was funny. Uh, like Joe was like, so when he was in the bunker and I guess, uh, Sandra, you know, right when she was about to kill him and then, uh, Evie kind of starts knocking on the door that I guess the alarm goes off. So she comes down there. And so she's talking to Sandra, like, I guess, you know, about like, if like, Oh, do you know, Joe? Like he seems to know you like whatever this and that, but it was funny. Cause she was like saying, she's like, Oh yeah, he likes football. And he was like Iowa or something. <laughs> and then he, you saw him, he's all, you know, like gagged up. And he like made that face. I was like, <gasps> like what? Like, no, <laughs> it was like, clearly he was Ohio state. So I don't know. It's it, like, look, I may be a prisoner here, but you're not going to defame my team. Like yes. That. But it, I mean, it was just this so cute funny just quick little scene Mm -hmm. that was added that comedy to it and so i don't know i just i i loved it it was just like so unexpected and then it was also really liz like okay dude you're like tied up you almost got killed and like that's the one thing that's like bothering you at the moment uh that was so funny um i thought the goat peeing after joe killed sandra was funny just now (laughs) now let's go ahead and yeah is it a goat or is it a lamb Somebody said lamb, and I was thinking goat. I was thinking goat. But the, the, when she was carrying it, I don't know. It's yeah, some I mean, sort of it's some sort of cloven hooved 
herbivore. <laughs> yeah, I and truthfully, I did not pay attention to like, oh, which one it was. So it was kind of like, oh, I just go with the first thing. So I, I, I was thinking it was a goat, but yeah, it could have been a lamb. Kind of had the. I think it's a lamb. Yeah. Well, uh, the f- again another funny little like uh, quip at the end was in Joe like who was high after eating that brownie and then he was like saying like, after all this huge ordeal like <laughs> that he's like why am I so hungry <laughs> it's just I don't know they like the whole tone of this episode it was just fun it was very enjoyable and it's been such a w- way change of pace than we're used to um, yeah uh, I'll just move on Um, I thought that the intro felt very fear-like style Um, and so I'm kind of I do l- like that treatment Um, and especially since we're getting like kind of these independent episodes that aren't going to be tied to each other or at least we don't think they ever will that that title card that kind of like the way they do it in fear when it's like oh he, this is kind of like the folk character focus and so they get their whole little you know right shadow character whatever that doing it like this is gonna be i don't know i i enjoy that i think it's it's, it's cool so i'm kind of interesting that they've taken some fear <laughs> cues well it's it, i'm not gonna quite say it was like the brady bunch for me but it's the fact that they had you know, six panels, and each panel represented what I figure is one of each of the stories. Mm-hmm. And so it was, you know, it, it worked together to give the intro. And I kind of like the music. Yeah. And I also noticed that the intro wasn't really long either, which is a good thing. Yeah. Yep. It was just quick, like, hey, here, episode. Um, which, you know, it's good. It, was just, it gives more time for the episode. Um well, the next thing that I thought was a kind of interesting too, fear like, uh, was at the beginning when they were showing Joe living in his life in the bunker, and I felt that that whole play um, was very similar to June and John Dory when they were in the uh, Teddy's bunker, mm-hmm. like where it's like he's waking up, you know, like just here's my routine. It's like oh, here's the deal, um, and you know they did pretty much the similar thing there. So I don't know, like uh, if like you know. I have to look. And of course, this is when I probably should have looked into it is like if the writers or the director, <laughs> I'm sure they probably done some fear stuff that did they borrow from that to kind of play that off? I don't know. Um, or it's just, I think that was more to kind of mark the passage of time and to kind of show that he was in his little routine. Yeah. I mean, true. It just, I just, I, that was the first thing that popped in my mind though, was that episode with John and jo- um, in June. Yep. I can go for that. Um, there was also the, cl- and also the collection of watches that Sandra had from, uh, this is what I'm not entirely sure. She was collecting these from the one guy that she killed, or was this from multiple people? I think it was multiple people. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I, I think I only remember her just talking about the one guy, but then saying like, oh, he had all these watches. But um, that reminded me of the governor. Um, or the what was that episode that was not too long ago? Warlords, where that guy that yeah. they met, you know, and he had like skulls or something in the back from the people that he t- took out. So I don't know. I was just like, it was fun to like see those little things, and also I was kind of like, oh yeah, okay, I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, overall, I do have to say that I give the episode like a big, big, awesome sauce because it is. It it was just refreshing to watch a Walking Dead, you you know, or in the universe, just like I don't know. It was like it was it wasn't serious. It was fun. It was enjoyable, and unlike Fear, where it was like it wasn't ridiculous and like just like I didn't have to think too hard. I just enjoyed what I was watching. It was a fun episode. I mean, it told a story. It had a fairly tidy beginning, middle, and end. Mm -hmm. And while it had a resolution, it also left you with, you know, maybe we'll see them again. Right. Nope, exactly. So it was a really 
good deal. I enjoyed. All right. Yep. Did you have anything else to add? <laughs> I think you probably... No, sir. Okay. All right. Well, then that leads us into our weak sauce. You're worthless and weak. And again, we just got one weak sauce from Glennis from Toronto. And she says, I want that electric motorcycles. Those batteries never seem to run out of charge. <laughs> you bought them in Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, and then she said they both managed to walk far and reach their respective destinations after losing all their supplies after the motorcycle was swiped. Yeah. Yes. Let's. I, I'll. I'll be getting into that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Glennis. Um, that was all our week sauce. So, LT, why don't you take it away? Okay. Here's the thing. I started off with going, you know, I, I mentioned tropes of the show earlier. And of course, if you have a vehicle that works and it's fully equipped, you can't hold on to it. So, of course, it is the walking dead. <laughs> so they had to unmotorcycle them at some point. Um, again, in the in the tradition of things why did he leave the motorcycle running and unlocked and walk <laughs> away from it right <laughs> uh, you know i'm still to the point where it's still a big dangerous world out there uh so you were so worried about her figuring out how to steal it then you just let your guard down and left it running. And, you know, that's why people get their cars stolen at convenience stores there, Terry. <laughs> um, of course, in the tradition of this is why we can't have nice things. They were walking. They had no gear. They got caught in the bunker that has power, water, and is full of supplies. And the only downside of it is, yes, there is a crazy Joker-faced dead <laughs> zombie woman in the bunker. But you could get rid of the dead crazy zombie-faced woman in the bunker, <laughs> and then you've got the bunker. Uh. I, it's it's the same thing that I have always complained about with Walking Dead they have somewhere that's nice, something happens, and they leave it. They don't take anything with them. They just leave. And I'm going, it's a bunker full of stuff. <laughs> and lights and water, and and you left. <laughs> and I understand you're both stoned and you're giddy and you're happy that you found each other and got rescued. But come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, know, you use some sense here. Um, my other, one of my other complaints was, okay, when they were camping at night, when the walkers walked up on them, they didn't set up any type of perimeter defense. You'd think with all that crap he had on the bike, he could have at least had some stakes and some, uh, you know, parachute cord and at least put up a string around the motorcycle so that if a walker came walking up, they would walk into the string or something. Yeah. Because thought... we've seen, yeah, we've seen people that carried, you know, like some hurricane fence or some bob wire or something. Because you don't have to make a wall. It doesn't have to be impenetrable. It just has to be something so that if it stumbles into the camp in the middle of the night, it doesn't, like, just eat you. Right, right. Yeah, I thought I heard bells ringing. So, yeah, I don't know, you know, just a, like, again, because they don't they don't they weren't showing us that but it was like i thought i was hearing like okay so maybe they have because we've seen that before like a little warning system but yeah it's like they didn't have anything else other than that other than it's like you guys can't just fall asleep and be completely exposed like that like, <laughs> like that's just, you're, you're gonna die so it was kind of weird that they didn't make a yeah we've seen it before so yep and 
my very last point is this is why you use the buddy system. I, when I was in the army, you always talked about, you didn't go anywhere by yourself. You always had your buddy, you know, your battle buddy went with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. You were never alone. There was always two of you in boy scouts for the 20 some years that I was a scout leader. I always told my guys never go by yourself. Always have a buddy because if there's two of you, then if something happens to one of you, you're not by yourself. Mm -hmm. If there's two of you, that means you have twice as many eyes, twice as many ears. And I think that's part of the thing that you need a buddy. That's why, that's why Sandra went crazy because she was by herself. Yep. (laughs) Uh, If, you know, if Terry would have had another dog or if he would have had another person or something, he wouldn't have left the bunker and he would still be in his bunker and be watching football games (laughs) and be safe. Yeah, Uh, it's true. Now that he found Evie, he's got a buddy. (laughs) But now it's what you're going to do with it. I'm, I'm just saying, this is why you don't go alone. Yeah. Bad things happen to you when you go alone. Yep. Uh, I guess also, you know, sometimes you don't have a choice, though, but I guess it depends on your situation because that was kind of part of the whole part of the story, though, too, was the fact that, like, Evie kind of called him out, that it was like he was he was preparing so much for the end of the world that he didn't basically have a life, you know? And Right. So it's like... But what's of, her excuse? Well, true, but I mean, uh, well, right, but she's she's carefree and like yep. more of the free spirit, so maybe. <laughs> but then again, we're not going to probably ever know what her like background was. She was just what came there, you know. Maybe she was living with a charismatic artist musician on an old movie ranch. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and I was going to say, for you young people, that was a Charles Manson reference. And if you don't know who Charles Manson is. Oh, uh, look it up. You look it up. It's yeah. on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. All right. Well, I, I, I'll i just pull one little thing from my, uh, what I put my watch sauce, but basically the same thing that you were just talking about, the leaving the motorcycle, like running, and it was kind of like, why would you do that? Um, I kind of also took it though. It was like, yeah, this is that's kind of like, like that's like kind of ZA one hundred and one. Like that's you don't just leave it just running like just there. You don't, don't ever ass- don't ever assume you're by yourself, right? But I then took it as being the fact that he is so really unprepared for being outside because he's been in his bunker the whole time. So it's like, you know, and see, and see, I, that's, I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to throw a flag on that place. Or all right. <laughs> is most of the people that I know that would have gone through the trouble of building that big and that elaborate a bunker would also have done tactical training and, you know, nobody just does like the 60s and builds a bomb shelter and puts stuff in it and expect to hide in the shelter and then come out and go back to their regular life. Yeah. Well. Most of the guys that I know that have gone that far, that have built the bunker and stocked it with stuff, the first thing you do, the assumption is there's somebody coming to take my stuff, so I'm going to have you know, guns and training, and I'm going to be, you know, prepared to defend my hidey hole. And if you want to say it was a moment of weakness for him, if you want to say that it was, you know, uh, a moment where he dropped his guard, I will go for that. But if, if I'd never said anything about it, it's a 360 degree world. 
You have to have your head on a swivel. Uh, you have to be aware of your surroundings and you have to be aware of where you are. Yeah. 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 And it was a, it was a horrific lapse in judgment because you just, like I said, this is why people get their cars stolen <laughs> yeah, you know, I, at convenience stores or out of their driveway because when they go, well, I'll leave it running. I'll only be gone a second. Well, a second is all you need. Yeah, people down here do that all the time. And that's the first thing I am always think, too, because it's well, like, why would I could just totally steal well, your truck? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, my, my other question, well, since we're on the subject, since I just thought of it. So why leave the goat? You've got a sidecar. Take the goat with you. <laughs> hey, the guy at least was bartering. Well, but I'm just saying, you jump on the bike, you you throw you throw Skipper in the sidecar, and you go, deuces, bitches, I'm out of here. And you jump in the motorcycle and drive off. <laughs> and keep the goat. Um, no, keep I don't know. Goat. Yeah. I, well, I guess the guy was actually at least trying to be somewhat nice like i well yeah but i'm sorry i'm I, sorry it's sir. kind of funny one goat for a motorcycle is not <laughs> a fair trip <laughs> no it's not <laughs> that's that's just kind of like you made a down payment and you're just you're <laughs> running off to say okay uh, it's good enough it's what i got yeah all right <laughs> that's too funny all right all right well that takes us into our what sauce what 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 all right, uh, I'll go first. And Glenn is from Toronto. Her what sauce is those hidden walker defense mechanisms at Joe's Bunkers that sprung up out of the ground and the entrance at the crazy lady's place. Ingenious. Yeah. It was it, it was definitely a cool effect, but to me it was, I would have rather just had, I'd rather just have concertina wire. Mm-hmm. Or, as you know, as a uh, southerner from a semi-agrarian background, that's why you have bob wire. <laughs> yep. You know that it's really cool to have the super ninja pop up pitchfork circle, but I'd rather just have a fence. Yep. <laughs> True. So. Next up is Renee from Atlanta who says, I'm not doing any sauce except what the hell, because this was definitely what the hell. And she has two eye rolls after that. I was not impressed at all. I just hope it's going to get better. And she finishes up with peace and love. (laughs) Oh, Renee. Yeah. I mean, I hope that, you know, to give us some time i think i just i saw the the next episode and like i think what they're doing besides of course i don't know about the alpha episode but it's just like i don't know it's just like they're totally doing this in a totally different way and so far i'm enjoying it and so hopefully you will too so give us some chance i'm glad you're here um yep well i mean i enjoyed it yeah no it's just Take some time. I don't know. I, that's you. Let us know what how you feel, Renee. That's all. It's all about. Um, all righty. Well, that was all of our listeners' what sauce. So that leads us into our own. Um, I'll go into mine uh, since I don't see you have any. But um, I kind of was like like jumping off of like what Glennis was saying. Um, because it's like so. I thought why. Did Joe, he like activated his defenses when he was outside with Gilly. Um, but I felt like he was like basically right next to his front door or like his little door opening or whatever. Like he wasn't that far away. So I just felt like he just nope. could, he could have just grabbed the dog and ran inside. And then that would have been, you know, the walkers are not fast. And maybe he wasn't done. Maybe he wasn't done pooping. Well, regardless, fine. You can still grab that dog <laughs> and like bring it inside. Because what obviously, what was the obvious thing that was going to happen was like, oh yeah, the dog's going to jump at a walker and then get bit. It was like, okay. Anyways, I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it it was a, it was what it was. And then also into my next point though too is just like 
he never tried to take that gun away from Evie. And he had so many chances to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, he's a big dude. Like, he could have overpowered her so many times. And I get it's part Mm -hmm. of the story that they were playing or whatever. So it was like, you know, he was lonely or like he, you know, was kind of like, okay, but, you know, I'm actually talking to somebody in person or like whatever, you know, after it was like a a year and a month. Um, So I get that part, but it was kind of like, I think she was like actually, I think when he went to go pee... Or she, like, and she, she was locking him back up, or or maybe is unlocking him, but it was like he literally could have just grabbed the gun, you know? Like, oh yeah, it was so obvious. It's like you could have just grabbed that, and like she would have not had any chance to even pull the trigger. But anyways, you know. The- well, you know, you could say, well, he's a nice guy, and he he wouldn't hit a girl. Well, I, that's and I'm kind going, of- and I'm going. This is the apocalypse, and she's holding a gun on you, and you don't know if she's going to be turn out to be, you know, batshit crazy, and you know, shoot you right. in the back of the grave. Like, yeah, like Sandra. And 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 you're right. He had plenty of. I mean, he definitely had the size advantage. You know, he could have at least snatched it away from her, or wrestled, for, wrestled her for it, or something. Yeah, yeah. It was just that was part of the story. So I mean. But it was kind of like, wait, 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 wait. Like, you literally can just grab it. <laughs> uh, and then the other Watt sauce, and that actually came to the end because obviously it's like, here they are. They all basically are like going off into the great unknown together mm-hmm. with this goat. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, how? I mean, I guess you can let a goat graze. Yes, they can pretty much eat anything. But I also was like, okay, well, but <clears throat> how are you feeding it? You know, it's like, it's, one of those things where it's like you're trying to survive. You have no like in the in the ZA, and you have no like. It's kind of one of those things like like with the main show. It's like having babies in the apocalypse is kind of unless you're in like yeah like the Commonwealth or like you have walls okay. or whatever. It's okay. It's like not that's the best. apples. <laughs> I, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mister McAdams, but your your knowledge of husbandry is. <laughs> is is down sir there's a bit there's a big freaking difference between you know farm animals and humans that yes baby humans are helpless and indefensible and have to be fed and cared for you know all she <laughs> has to do with the goat is just put it on a leash and you know let it walk around a little bit and it'll eat They'll be pl- because I mean they're still well no right kudzu I, I, and bushes and weeds and right bark but and- my I think more my point though I think though is just like you're keeping something though that you're still like trying to take care of that like is going to leave you vulnerable because you're feeding this goat and you're trying to take care she wants to take care of it she says oh it's got feelings like you know whatever so she's treating it like a pet and I was just saying yeah. more of like. That's one less thing you need to be worrying about is your goat's going to die at some point or you're going to have to kill it to eat it. And And I'm going to say it's (laughs) MREs on the hoof. (laughs) All right. Well, I just, I wanted to put it out there. So. (laughs) Okay. I, I understand, but I'm just saying it would be, to me, it would be harder for like a dog you know, but grazing animals, if you had like a horse or something like that, you can find enough grass and enough other stuff that it could just be free range and eat whatever grows around it. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, I get that. I got to right. I gotta uh, eliminate my silence here and come out of my silence. Kyle, you're wrong, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. It's Brian. Hey. I'll I'll right. say I'll say more later. I'm just gonna leave my feedback in the feedback section. But uh, yeah, Kyle, you're wrong. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Fine. That's, I just like Brian I'm, Brian, president of the Goat Breeders <laughs> Association. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, I I, I, I was right. like I can't wait for <laughs> to say that <laughs> later, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, all right. Fine. I just, you know, I'm like, I'm kind of on the page of where it's like the l- less like ancillary like issues 
was kind of like a get rid of it. You don't need it. Because like I said, I should just toss the baby to the walker. Wait a it's second. Hold on. Working. Now I'm thinking about this. You're a farmer. <laughs> but I don't have I don't have livestock. I don't have animals. You're a farmer. I deal with plants. You, you should, you're the last person that should be, you know, say, why would I keep? This? No, I would. I would be the first person that would have shot or killed that goat because I know of a Why? how like of, the, the goats eat anything a, they, they can get rid of your your uh, your weeds you know they're 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 like uh, nature's garbage and, yeah but in the mm, ZA I don't want to be taking care of something <laughs> yeah I, anyway but in the ZA I wouldn't want to anyways yeah anyways <laughs> and and I yes I'm a farmer but I don't have animals. So it's, I'm, I'm yet. You know, it's like just because, yet. A, well, yet. Yeah. I have a feeling, I'll... I have a feeling that at some point you're going to cross that line and you will, you will have animals. You know, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but at some point <laughs> you're going to, you're going to see a cute baby goat and you're going to say, oh, look at that cute baby goat. What if we raise nope, goats? Nope. nope. I'm not, nope. No, I'm not doing goats. <laughs> might do ducks. I, I would bet more on chickens on yep. chickens yeah actually ducks i just i just used i just used you know the goats because of course it was part of the no i know uh, i know yeah I know, I know. probably chickens <laughs> they're yeah. just they're just seagoing chickens with web feet <laughs> <laughs> anyway fine anyways all righty well let's move on um, unless you have anything else to say. Um, well, no, I, I'm just going to, since, since I didn't join right in, I'm just going to leave my feed, the, I'm going to leave all my stuff at the feedback part. So at the feedback. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Easier cool. to manage okay. that way. So we'll see Sweet. you got you listeners later. All right. Well, then that leads us into her sad and awe sauce. Oh, all right. Well, we actually surprisingly didn't get any sad and awesome sauce from our listeners. Um, so that gets into ours, which really is just uh, the obvious one is Gilly. Poor, poor Gilly. Uh, just it's always sad to see s- someone lose someone they love. So the dog dying, it was just like, oh, which but I mean, that was the catalyst for him actually being kind of forced to leave. Mm-hmm. So it just still sad to see. <laughs> Yep. All right. And I don't I don't have any sad sauce. I just yeah. I have one last comment and I'm going to hold on to it. Okay. All right. Well, then I guess that just takes us into our feedback. We can talk about it. We're done talking. Time to listen. All right. Well, we have a voicemail from the one and only Renee. <laughs> so I will go ahead and play that. Hi, guys. This is Renee from Fairburn. I'm so happy to be back with you guys. I really miss you guys last season. I did not go back and watch Fear because the reviews were horrible, not just from you guys, but from everyone. So I was like, it's, you know, just a waste of time. I'll just catch up with them when Tales of the Walking Dead comes on. And I was not happy with that at all. <laughs> Tales, this, this episode was not good to me. It was boring. Um, the plot was bo- boring. Ted Cruz, and I think her name is Evie Olivia Munn, um, I, which I really like her as an actress. And I, I like Ter- Terry Cruz as an actor. I just didn't like this, this episode. And hopefully it'll, it will be like the kids show that was on last year. You know, it started out boring and like, what the heck? And eventually it got better and better. So I'm hoping that it will, you know, get better. And, um, you know, it can tie me over until October the 2nd. But the good thing is um, um, House of Dragons come on next week. And then the following week, C will be back on. So I will have a couple of episodes that will hold me over until. And I think Handmaid's Tale come back, comes back on in September as well. So I have some shows to hold me over um, until October And October, when I say October, man, it is bittersweet for me because I cannot believe that we're down to, like, the last episodes of The Walking Dead. I, my goddaughter, she moved into, um, she started college on yesterday, so we went and moved her into 
her apartment and help her, de- get, you know, decorate it, decorate it. And I was saying, I have to leave, guys, because um, Tales of the Walking Dead comes on tonight and I have to be at home. I have to get myself ready or whatever. And her boyfriend was like, are you serious? That show has been on since I was a little kid. That show still still comes on. Are you for real? I mean, is it, do you seriously, you're still watching that? <laughs> and I'm like, um, actually, it's getting ready to come to an end. So do not make fun of it. So, yeah, it's really bittersweet. I cannot believe it's coming to an end. But technically, it's not because um, Rick and Michonne is coming out with um, a couple of episodes. Well, more than a couple. So I'm happy about that. And I'm glad it's not going to be at the movies. And I'm glad that they're going to, you know, their story I feel like it needs to, it needs some ending. It needs some um, closure. Um, We need some understanding of why they walked away from their kids. Well, why Michonne, after Rick supposedly was dead and she turned around and she walked away from her kids. We need some understanding about that. But um, yeah, that I'm looking forward to. And um, like I said, hopefully it'll get better. Of course, I'm going to stick around with you guys and, you know, watch it. But um, I'm going to also go on the Facebook group and interact. Um, and give my ratings and, you know, a couple of my, um, well, I guess I don't, I don't really have awesome sauce. I guess the only awesome sauce I, I would say was Olivia Munn. She was a great fighter. But other than that, the show was boring to me. It was, it wasn't nothing about it that was awesome to me or sad or whatever. But I know that y'all introduced a new, new one, I think is what the hell sauce. So, um, I'll be glad when I can put that in my, um, feedback (laughs) but yeah i just wanted to call in so i would definitely be talking to you guys on next week thanks uh thank you renee as always for your voicemail um yay yeah i just give it give it uh, some time a chance you know it's like it was the first you know episode obviously they have you know we have six more or five more but um yeah it's i think one of the things that I am kind of enjoying after seeing this first episode, though, was the fact that it's like we're still getting our Walking Dead world, you know, our universe. But they're, I feel like, though, that they're now actually doing it in a way where it's like, you know, I mean, people have kind of kind of referred to it as being like as the webisodes, you know, when we used to get those. That it's like... Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know if any of these will actually start crossing over or if they're, you know, spin off or like what, you know, whatnot. But it's just still, it's like fun to see something new and different that does not have a connection with the main show or fear. Yeah. Cause it's a, it's a big world out there. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we have this, we have the spin offs. So, you know, like Daryl's going over to Europe, you know, basically. So it's kind of like, oh, that can open up a huge, like new thing um or who you know whole new sh- main show um so yeah it's like uh i totally hear you but um i hope you like definitely just look forward to keep you know sending in the comments the oh hell no sauce that was strictly for fear <laughs> so it wasn't in this uh like in the doc or whatever and i'm not sure if we'll bring it back but you can always still you know tag it as that if you want to um that was kind of more of for fear because fear was so ridiculous <laughs> yeah because because sometimes just just what isn't enough <laughs> yeah oh all right well again thank you renee um all right well then that takes us into the next one you would take that so we next bunch of feedback is Deanna from Detroit. She says, I enjoyed the comedic banner between Joe and Evie, a little lighthearted humor in the apocalypse. I really enjoyed it. Only got to watch it once, but it was pretty good. Only thing I thought was dumb was them leaving a perfectly good bunker that from the looks of it had a very good supply of food and other necessities to survive an apocalypse. Heck, it even had edibles for your enjoyment. She's got winky face, like a laughing face, and I think that's a roll on the floor. Damn it. That was my one good thing. So. All right. And she goes on to say, why didn't they drag old girl's butt out of there and dump her outside and keep the place for themselves? No, they'd rather leave on foot with no supplies, no vehicle, and no weapons. They'd rather carry a goat 
and fight the toe tags. Face palm, face palm, face palm. <laughs> so much for being a survivalist because that is definitely not how they operate, leaving behind a good bunker full of supplies. Overall, a pretty good story. And I'll just say, see, I feel validated now. It's not <laughs> just me. Yep. No, it's no, it's not. But like, it is like what you we've said before. Just even with like fear, it's kind of like take like, the stuff, sort it later. <laughs> right, exactly. And she, I even wrote that down. <laughs> I had that down to say that's that's. I had that in my comments to say yep. that uh, that's exactly what LT says. <laughs> and so, yeah, good uh, good thoughts there because. <laughs> Like I said, I was just going to say that. <laughs> well, you still can. Well, I still can, and I did <laughs> by agreeing. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's so it's so exactly right. It's like I didn't. That was the the one part of the episode that brought my rating down. Is that it's like why are they going somewhere else? Right, right. When it, the only uh, problem with that. You know, bunker is uh, um, Joker Governor. Uh, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call her, <laughs> Joker Governor um, Pot. What's her Pot name? Bacon Sandra. Sandra. Yeah. Or Sandra. Yeah. I, no, I know. I was thinking of um, uh, what's her name? The uh, Samantha Morton character. Oh, Alpha. Uh, Alpha. Yeah, Samantha. So, yeah. Alpha. So she was uh Yeah, she was crazy. Crazy. So you get rid of one crazy walker and um you have a, have a bunker. Yeah, you have a nice place to say. It had really made, nice lights, you made, know. <laughs> it was like made no sense at all. No sense. Especially, you know, two people that would be able to appreciate that, especially um Joe. Mm. And now yeah, made no sense. Yep. Agreed. They just have to go back to Ohio because they hate Michigan. That's what it is. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Uh, that's it's just like it's just like you guys from Oklahoma hating Texas. It's the same <laughs> damn rivalry. It's o Michigan Ohio State. Yeah, I grew up with that rivalry. You know, all my life, uh, hearing it on on the news <laughs> all the time. It's the same damn thing. Yep. You know. Yep. No. That game every every year. You know. So guess anyway. what. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ooh. let's move forward. Uh, our next uh, comment comes from Mike from Asheville, and he says, This was refreshing. I love the lighter mood and humor. The dog was a dark moment, but overall, it was a fun episode. Terry Crews has always been a decent actor. This showed a different side of him, and I'm all for it. The goat was a fun twist to introduce, completely unnecessary, but it fit the whole mood. Good premiere, and I hope all the episodes keep up the fun with the fun. Yep, I will have to say that I think that's yep. what they're going with. <laughs> Our next comment is Megan from Pennsylvania. She says, "I liked it a lot." Don't ever try to fool a hippie with a pot brownie. Your ass is getting cleavered. <laughs> uh yep and that was basically my last thing it's like yeah probably not a good idea to try to roofie the one person that's probably got a tolerance right and, uh, and like she said the connoisseur like she's she would have known exactly like oh yeah i know what you're trying to do and yeah that's not going to affect me <laughs> yep uh, all right. Well, last but not least comes from Glennis from Toronto. And she says, the last Doberman we saw was in The Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 10, when Rick and company were so desperate on the road that they literally ate dog food, as in the dogs themselves, <laughs> before meeting up with Aaron in the Alexandria era. That was sad that Joe's best friend had to die and the catalyst to leaving a totally nice safe bunker yes which again they can go back to it's like mm -hmm. it's still functioning and still sitting there <laughs> uh she goes on she says i think joe was very impressed with how evie managed to catch him and didn't balk at killing walkers or what did she call them toe toe jacks 
<laughs> rewound on the PVR, but still can catch the phrase. Uh, it's toe tags. Uh, she said, but get a proper helmet. That football helmet won't do nothing for his head in a crash. <laughs> and it's a little smiley face. Uh, she goes on. She says, I would uh, also have left EV2 if my motorcycle was stolen. So you can keep the lamb. Cute as it is, it isn't one in, um it isn't one for one in that band or that barter situation. I'd rather just have the motorcycle. Thank you. <laughs> Though Joe should have known better than to leave it running by his lonesome. Yep. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, both Joe and EB were chasing after the past. That wasn't quite as they remembered it with Joe going to his chat buddy or potential potential flame and Evie wanting to reunite with her husband. When their new relationship with each other or interaction was actually more real and had substance in the here and now. But it took them a while to realize that fact. Yeah, and I have to say that that's what was really... Well, I mean, obviously, that's basically the gist of the whole entire episode. But it was fun. I I don't know. That's what made this episode really, really good. Because outside of the fact of like what we brought up with the Watts and just like, oh, yeah, why would you leave your motorcycle running when you know people are going to try to steal it but it was about their relationship and again it's like i feel like this is like they try to do this kind of stuff in fear and it just never worked or it just never got fleshed out or it just never you know they they just never went there and they would just all of a sudden go to the next episode and like all the stuff you just previously saw (laughs) was like totally gone Mm -hmm. that getting it and just like this one like contained episode and this is all you're getting is like that's the drama you know like that's the human connection all that stuff that makes that made this episode like that enjoyable so i don't know i'm like i like this was what i really 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 enjoyed about it at the end besides walkers and you know the bunkers and all that stuff (laughs) uh she goes on she says inner unstable sandra also a cookie baking lady She's like, remind you of anyone? Smiley face. But with a twist, never trust a lady with a plate of cookies in the apocalypse. (laughs) Uh, So Sandra has stopped seeing the good in people a long time ago. And instead of using the app TikTok, she collected TikTok's watches as mementos of the poor guy's time with her. If they were good or had bad intentions, that didn't matter her. If Evie was like that, she would have killed Joe and taken the bike and not let him live. True. The fight Evie had with Sandra was pure ninja, and the hatchet, or is that an axe, uh, killed by Joe, was classic. That was a cleaver. Yeah. Uh, Don't go killing Skipper, but he's named now, so part of the family, so no lamb chops, please. And she says, I really enjoyed the episode. There were good acting from both Terry Crews and Olivia Munn and the crazy lady, uh, Kirsty Bryan, playing Sandra. Nice to have the Walking Dead universe back on Sundays. And I will agree. Yes, I will agree, too. It was just after what we went through with fear and then having the nice little break that we did. It was just nice to come back to this. And that's what I'm saying. Even if this episode would have been less cool it's still better than i don't know 80 percent of what we saw in fear (laughs) yeah it was just good and i like i think again i'll have to say though it's like i you know we talked about this on the last episode when we were doing our little kind of like news and info it's like just the cast alone that they have for these oh yeah episodes like that's also kind of adds this whole new like fun element or just, I don't know. It's just like we, it, it's kind of like the guest starring role, you know, it's all like, Oh, it's like the tonight show. And like, Oh, who's on? It's like, Oh, it's Terry Crews, and Olivia Munn. Boom. You know, it's like it, uh, to me, I'm just, I, I'm loving this. Like I'm loving this, like what they're doing. It's just like these one-offs. Here's our little guest stars. You know, it's like, I guess it's like law and order. Cause everybody's on law and order at some yep. point. So it is. And I think this is the thing of everybody who always wanted to get on the show that didn't have a chance to get on the show. Right. They're kind of like, well, this is my chance. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm totally for it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Glennis. Um, Great comments as always. 
Uh, all right. Well, that was all of our listeners' feedback. Um, so that will go into actually drum roll, please. Which I don't have that somewhere. I'll add it in. Uh, Brian, do <laughs> you want to go in with your feedback? Yeah, and and originally this was going to be a surprise, but uh, <laughs> you jumped I had in. To, <laughs> you just you couldn't, couldn't hold. You back. couldn't hold back. I couldn't hold it. <laughs> I couldn't hold back. So now, ladies uh, and gentlemen, hi. a voice from the beyond. Hi, everybody. It's it's good to be back, at least in a limited capacity. Um, I've got way too much going on, uh, working two jobs <laughs> and uh, some stuff going on at, at home. So um, I won't be around every week, but hopefully, you know, put in my feedback. But I was like, well, I can just rather than put in a voicemail, I will just uh, join you guys for a few <laughs> minutes. So. Yeah. Um, I, 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 uh, I was with you and I think most of the listeners, I guess everybody, but Renee, um, I like this episode a lot. It wasn't, wasn't perfect. It had some issues, some of which we, we've talked about. Um, but I gave it an eight and a half, um, eight and a half. He's going to do a series on me. <laughs> <laughs> And that, uh, that's a kind of a reference to an old Star Trek episode. They said, oh, we're going to do a special on you. Anyway, um, or ineffective kill switches or Joker watches. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I kind of like what Glenn has said about TikTok. Was it a reference to TikTok? I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was uh, really interesting. I, I really liked um, the... You know, back and forth with Terry Crews and Olivia Munn. Um, I thought that certainly, you know, was the highlight of of the episode. I thought it got a little a little weird once they got to uh, you know Sandra, but but uh, I thought that it, it like was kind of tropey in a way that eventually those two would kind of converge um, and. You know, I guess she never found him, whereas, uh, you know, he found her and she was right. nuts. <laughs> and she was really nuts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't just a little nuts. She was She was really nuts. And um, that was part of one of the issues that I had with the episode is there was some, and I've talked about this, especially with, um, with fear. Um, you know, and you guys mentioned it last week, paraphrasing the old, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, Morgan, you know, falls asleep in the back of a truck, wakes up in Mississippi. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it was, it was that kind of thing, um, where they, they said in a couple of places that a year had passed, but they were acting like a lot more time had passed. And, um, Sandra, for example, uh, for her to act that batshit crazy, more than a year would have had to have passed to me. To me, that mm -hmm. that's that's not long enough for for that to occur. And um, unless she was already, you know, already on, on the crest of batshittery before yeah. everything went bad. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> um, so. But but anyway, that that was the the thing that I noticed uh, is that uh, you know there there was definitely they couldn't seem to decide whether ten years had passed or a year had passed, and they they kind of went back and forth, and um, you know, or some somewhere in between. Yeah. So that to me, that I kind of I kind of had issue with that. Um, I thought that the same thing that i guess was a dieta that said about the uh why would they leave that place why mm -hmm. why would they take um you know it, and if they couldn't you know if they couldn't stay take the shit and and leave you know but they didn't take anything they just left and that made no sense but there was no point in leaving they had a very great compound to use um it had everything they would need 
they just had one crazy, you know, toe tag <laughs> that, that, uh, you know, had a cleaver right. and that that's all they needed to do. And, you know, heck, they probably could have, uh, killed her just by opening and closing the door, uh, <laughs> at a certain speed, you know, just cut her head off that way. Well, yeah. And what's the worst that could have happened, Brian? That if they'd have gotten rid of her and they go in the back and find the deep freezer full of all her ex-boyfriends, that's still very manageable. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So like that, that wasn't believable to me, especially those two, especially, you know, um, Joe, who, who was a prepper and would know what to do. And, and of course, uh, I think, uh, Evie would know what to do from, you know, the, the ground and that. Right, so right. that, that was, that was to me a big hole. To me, like I said earlier, it seemed like the only reason that they were leaving was because it's in Michigan. <laughs> because an Ohio, an Ohio person can't live in Michigan. Oh no. Oh yeah. Um, and I, 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 I can, I know some stories about that. My, my wife, um, she, she married, she's from Michigan, right? And she married, her first husband was, you know, um, a big Ohio state fan and um, her family hated her, did not accept her because she was from Michigan. That's the only reason, no other reason. So yeah. Oh, anyway. Texas is not that crazy. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Well, these people were kind of crazy. I don't think that that's, <laughs> I don't think that's normal, but um, anyway, for um, my what sauce i was like who stole the bike you know they had the guy you know he he left the goat stole the bike but we never find out who stole the bike so to me that was a little i don't know it was like a dangling yeah part of the story like, yeah yeah i thought it was going to be uh steve that was the crazy one because steve was the one that was doing the what you call it painting painting yeah um so i guess it was good to that it was kind of a you know turnaround but i like i said i th i thought it was going to be uh her husband that was the crazy one and uh sandra would be dead so you know and um speaking of that speaking of crazy sandra the first thing that she says to uh joe was you know Oh, me? Oh, I'm, I'm sweaty and gross. <laughs> the elliptical. I had uh, went to the elliptical and squats. It's like, why would you say that? <laughs> it's leg day. This is, this is the apocalypse. Everyone is sweaty and gross. Yeah, you but know, it's, the, it's, it's leg day. It's leg day? Okay. <laughs> she well, was working out. Yeah, she was working out. I guess that's just... It's the yeah. same thing with with joe and he was working out it's you know she's she's got to do her circuits you know well, it's leg day today and it's, it's arm day tomorrow right and she's still living in a world of her own making that has the convenience that she can like take a shower and then do workout and be normal oh, okay so i guess that's kind of you know with her craziness well besides her craziness is that since she's been in the bunker and since she hasn't had to deal with the normal day-to-day -day life in the apocalypse, then she's still, you know, doing the things that she might have done before. You know, <laughs> clean up people. <laughs> I, no, I was going to say, you know, do, you know, laundry days on Tuesday, and, I, you know, I've got my set, my workout schedule, and, then you watch taking people's you, watches on Wednesdays. <laughs> yep. Watch a rom com, killing them on Thursdays. <laughs> music, I yeah. suppose so. Yeah, I mean, she probably had a same a routine just like Joe did. So it's just, but yep. not. I know. guess so. Not a regular routine. 
That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, as far as the um, sad sauce, obviously, uh, Gilly, you said it. Yeah. Kyle, I would agree. Um, I felt bad. I, I l- really like that dog. You know, I, I like the, I should say for um, awesome sauce, I really like the cold open in this episode. I thought it was good. So I'll say that. And uh, so I was sad to see him go. Um, I, You were saying that you thought that it was odd for him to <clears throat> put the, uh, you know, rake defenses up. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that was, I thought that was pretty cool for him to do that. So I didn't have a problem with it. I just wish that it ended up better. Mm-hmm. Um, aside from that, I only got to, got to watch the episode once. Um, so I don't have too much more to say other than, um, I saw the cold open from the beginning of the next episode and uh yeah it does look really good yep. so <laughs> yeah yeah i actually can't wait to watch the rest of it so awesome and um that's i'm gonna i'm gonna get off here um but uh the three of us starting next week will be covering star trek lower decks Woo-hoo. so if you guys want to hear us mm-hmm. you'll be all you got to do is pick up that podcast so um and um uh, you know ho- ho- i should i will try to leave feedback for this show every week i can't say for sure that i'll be able to but i do plan on um being on for the last date because that's going to be uh, if i miss that i i won't i will not forgive myself. So, um, and besides star Trek will be done by then. So we won't, uh, um, yeah. not have like any crazy. Yeah. 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 And, and I should finally get everything, you know, straighten out with, um, all the stuff that we're behind on, but, but yeah, um, I started a new job, um, a few weeks ago and it's been going really well. Um, and I still have the old job working part time, so that that adds more work for me. But uh, but the money's good, so <laughs> and uh, yeah, so so yeah, everything's everything's good. But I'm just busy, and um, we will see you guys later. These two, I don't have to worry about this podcast <laughs> because it's in good hands. Oh, thank I mean, you. <laughs> weren't these guys weren't these guys fantastic last week? They were. Except the fact that it took 37 minutes. To <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to uh, come yeah. on here and not mention that, right? No, no, you could. <laughs> I just like, it's like, like, I think I even did with like the editing. It was like, I had forgotten about like how I did things. And then also, yeah, you were like, hey, just say something in the beginning. And then it just like totally it's like, like didn't you, happen. You got to remember, <laughs> you got to remember, I, I I'm a tar- tiny bit narcissistic, so you know. Just, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Same way. Just, just, just uh, yeah. I guess all of us are. Um, so but that anyway, you knew it, so that you knew down to the down to the second when we mentioned your name. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you guys were great. Um, I thought you you really covered the news well, um, especially LT. You you made it a um you made it a career there so <laughs> you would have kept uh, uh wes huntington proud on the <laughs> star trek side so anyway uh hopefully we'll uh, talk to you guys next week on the on this side and we'll definitely talk to you guys next week on yes. the star trek side so oh uh, good to that, have you on and see you yes so okay i bid you adieu bye-bye good night bye. good night uh all right uh it's always always good to have brian on so hopefully he can join in like more pop in like that instead of just like sending voicemail or whatever um uh the only thing i wanted to add because i thought i'd already written it down but i guess i must have been in mid you know thinking or trying to do other notes or whatever i thought that it was interesting that pot was such a kind of not a focus, but you know, it was a big element of this episode. 
And I just thought it was interesting that like this was probably the first time that we were actually that that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Because you think that pot would be kind of like a really big thing that in the ZA, you know, we, we got the main show, we get cigarettes. You know, Daryl smoked and then there you know, there's there were cigarettes. That's just kind of like there was always a thing. Um, but then especially with pot being legal now, you know, that it's much more available. Uh, the, uh, uh, Mr. McAdams is not legal everywhere, sir. Well, it's legal in most places, and if not, you can go across the state lines. <laughs> uh, is it still uh, illegal, like, completely across the board? I mean, I, I don't know. It's, there's, it's, yeah, there's still a lot of places that it's, it's still again the law. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, okay. In any regards, though, that that to me was like, I'm surprised that we never saw that being something that people would be doing or wanting in a world like this, that this was the first time that I feel like we've seen it, you know, as just being like, oh, yeah, an edible or like, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, she's t- talking about growing her own weed and, you know, it's yep. whatever. So, I don't know. I just it's a little thought well and we don't know if it's uh still a part of the rules for tv shows that you can't talk about that stuff or there's bound to be a compelling reason why yeah oh i mean true i mean alcohol and cigarettes are backed by big business (laughs) and they're predominantly legal yes all righty. Well, do you have anything else to add? No, sir, I do not. All right. Well, then that takes us into our news, ratings, and info. There's a couple weird stories on the news. All right. Well, this will be quick because, uh, and thanks to Brian, he actually was able to get some of this information. Um, I was looking for it whenever we were going to, like, Get, when I was trying to get the doc ready, but he kind of mm-hmm. beat me to it. But Tales of the Walking Dead, season one, episode one, got a .09 in the 1849 with 572,000 viewers. It didn't make the top 50, so I didn't get to see what the extended ratings were, like with the 50 plus and all that. Because I was kind of curious if like, you know, the younger crowd didn't watch this or if it was the other way around. So I don't know, hopefully maybe it'll go up a little bit more. Um, It's not great, but it's not terrible because the season finale world beyond actually got a 0.07 with a four, 428,000 viewers. And the season finale of fear got a 0.11 with 710,000 viewers. So it was like right in the middle between those two. So, I'm kind of curious if those numbers will pick up, but you know, again, I always feel like when you're dealing with the ratings on like the day or the hour of like when it airs is kind of not any more of a, you know, it's hard to really get the full picture because like I have AMC plus. And so I watched next week's episode already. And truthfully, I'm like, I don't really even watch what's recorded when it aired until like I'm using my second or third watch because it has better, better captioning. Right. So, so it's kind of like, I'm not watching it when it airs hardly ever. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I, so this is, this is another case of, we don't know if streaming made a difference. I would say the other thing is that I don't know just casually flipping through AMC. I haven't seen them advertising it all that much. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think that could be a part of it that you've definitely gotten word of mouth for the fandom, right. but you know, to spread out to the normies, you kind of have to throw some commercials out there. Yeah. It's like they, when I was doing my rewatch on YouTube TV, like there was a lot of walking dead promos for part three coming up. Oh that, yeah, they're they're pimping the crap out of the movie. Right, show. but it was like, yeah, it, but it was like during the episode of Tales, then like all of the Walking Dead stuff was just like an every single like break. But yeah. yeah, it's like but Tales of the Walking Dead, yeah, I'm like I just knew about it obviously because, you know, I'm a fan, but it's not like I've never seen an episode on TV or like a a you know, the commercial. Um <clears throat> I know they're did a lot i've seen a lot on twitter so i don't know if like 
you know, if that just pops up because of who I'm following and stuff like that. But I did notice that before it aired. Probably. I was getting a lot of like, oh, here's promoted, you know, like Tales, The Walking Dead. So maybe they're going a different route. I don't know. Yep. Um, all right. Well, obviously this is episode one, so we will see next week with any of the ratings change. And obviously no Talking Dead. And I don't know if that's ever going to come back. Uh, Parrots, I doubt there will be any, so I'm probably not even going to try to even like check. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably check and just, but I don't know how. If- yeah, it's worth taking a peek, but I don't know. With that kind of performance, I don't know if they would even chart. So, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe. Who knows? Um, all right. Well, I didn't have any other real news. I know there might have been a couple things that popped up. So I don't know if you have anything to add. I just, I try to like scour and then I get some notification or a, like email. And I actually get way too many email alerts sometimes of just like what Google crawled yep. that day. So I didn't really see anything major come up. So I will just have to check for next week. Well, all that I've seen is that they have new, uh, new promo picks for the uh, main show season. Mm-hmm. And they're still... Yeah, you know, they're still talking about the Rick and Michonne show. Yeah. But that's really the only two things that I saw since we recorded last. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be, I'm sure, every little drip of news about the Rick and Michonne spinoff is going to blow up everything. <laughs> we want to know more for sure. All right. Well, yes, we next did. week, maybe we'll have some more to add to this. Um, all right. Well, do you want to tell people how to interact with us? I shall. Uh, we want to encourage you to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Walking Dead TTM. To submit your theories and feedback, most people post in our designated episode thread in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Walking Dead TTM. You can send us email. That's walking dead at talkthroughmedia.com. You can also use our feedback form on the webpage. That's at talkthroughmedia.com slash feedback. If you'd like to leave us voicemail, remember you can call 216-232-6146. And all of our new episodes are on YouTube. Just search for Talk Through Media and remember to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when we have new videos. Those videos go out first before the podcast does. And to support us, like and review the Talk Through Media Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash talkthroughmedia. And as always, the best way you can support us is in our Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash walkingdeadtalkthrough. And we would like to thank our Patreon supporters, Mike Rollo, Scott Kerr, Renee Murray, Dieta Patterson, that guy over there, Lawrence Todd, <laughs> Hello. and this guy, me, Kyle McAdams. Remember that Mike, Scott, Dieta, and Renee will be getting an early episode of a version of the episode this week. Uh, you can subscribe to us in Apple Podcasts or your podcast client of choice. And while you're there, give us a rating or review. You can also leave us a review at podchaser.com. There you can actually rate individual episodes or the whole podcast. And as always, remember to share our posts on Facebook and Twitter when we post them or tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to get us new listeners. All right. Well, next is where we obviously talk about like what else is going on in the network. And as Brian had alluded to, uh, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 3 is coming up soon. Uh, I think it's a, a week from this Thursday. Next week. Yes. So you will be, if you're following that or you want to go check it out, you can definitely uh, check it out at talkthroughmedia.com and listen to us talk about Star Trek Lower Decks, the cartoon show. <laughs> It'll be uh, us again. Yes. <laughs> With Brian. He's going to be there. All right, well, let's go. Okay, so the next episode of Tales of the Walking Dead, Season 1, Episode 2, is titled Blair slash Gina. Written by Carrie Drake and directed by Michael E. Satrazimus. Description from AMC Plus is Blair and Gina, hostile co-workers, try to escape the city and each other at the apocalypse start. 
And I have to say, I've seen this, and I really am very curious of what our listeners have to say because it was, it, it, it's just, I'll just leave it at that. It was like not what I was expecting whatsoever, but I enjoyed it. Okay. All right. So until next time, I'm Kyle. And I'm LT. And this is the Walking Dead Talk Through. Good night, everyone. Good night.